Yeah, I don't know how anyone uh, even spots you with these low-key outfits that you have on. Florida, baby. Florida. This is what everyone wears. What everybody look everybody around. Wow, you look ridiculous. Yeah, what is this? Venom? We are Afro Beta. Welcome to Miami. You don't say it, look at you, sit for the sick and the way. Hey, I'm Roan, and ever since I was a little kid, I've been eating food. Good cooking, good people, good music, good vibes. When you have all those ingredients, the whole neighborhood eats. This week, we're in Miami trying Cuban sandwiches. Our first stop was the walk-up window that's been specializing in Cuban sandwiches since 2015. With a line out the door and immaculate ratings, we clearly weren't the first ones to hear about sandwich. We're at sandwich. What? No, sandwich. Sandwich. Pretend you're pit bull. Sandwich. Not pretend you're me. Sandwich. There you go. <laughs> so, Mac is on the Miami Dolphins. He's never tried a Cuban sandwich. Never. <laughs> what? He's never tried a Cuban sandwich. What are you sandwich. talking? How long have you been here for? What? The Cuban sandwich. Ham, roasted pork, Swiss cheese, pickles, and mustard. Sometimes there are some variations, but those are the basics. This bread is incredibly crunchy. It's perfect. The inside is moist. It's perfectly seasoned. Those pickles are to die for. That mustard, it took 25 years to make. That's the shit. This sandwich reminds me of like a really great song. Throw that D. Throw, 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 throw that D. Throw that D. It's by the world famous, I don't even know them, Too Late Proof. And so why, how does this remind you of throwing that D? Say no more. Not for nothing, you have a little bit of 305 stank in you, and that's impressive. I love that. I don't know what it means, but I like it. In 1971, Felipe Valls opened a tiny eatery named after a Parisian palace called Versailles. 50 years later, that little shop has cemented its legacy, taking up an entire city block and serving hundreds of locals and tourists a day. That's probably why Versailles calls itself the most famous Cuban restaurant in the world. We talked to the third generation owner and some local food luminaries. I believe that it is the oldest, longest running Cuban restaurant in Miami. The most iconic Cuban restaurant in America, period. Our menu has pretty much been the same for 50 years. The guy who did all these mirrors actually is uh, Pitbull's uncle. That's like some Miami. of the most Miami shit I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Something comes back to Pitbull. I think we were talking about it earlier. Two Just degrees Pitbull's of Pitbull, everywhere. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the history of the Cuban sandwich. Tampa insists they invented I insist that Cubans in Cuba probably invented it. It's Cuban bread, a nice Swiss cheese, mustard, pickles, ham, and pork. This bread is flour, salt, water, and lard. Back to the pork. Why pork, though? So, like, when the Spanish came to Cuba and, like, basically enslaved everybody, you know, the one thing that they, that they did bring was pigs. That window out front. Your grandfather came up with that? Yeah. So does he get, like, money whenever someone makes a tiny window, or...? <laughs> <laughs> You should get a royalty on that, right? <laughs> Part of the Cuban eating experience in Miami is the Ventanita, a tiny window where patrons can walk up, have a coffee, and catch up on some gossip. But you gotta know how to order, or the young ladies working the window will shoo you away. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Mi amor! Hola! Hola, como están? Bien, uh, un colado con azúcar, por favor. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah, the ratio. Yeah? Oh my. Oh yeah? It's like that? Mm -hmm. That's how you feel? Render speechless. This is the best Cuban, the first one I've ever had. Okay. The baseline's high, hard on the outside, juicy like the Caribbean on the inside. Not all the good spots in Miami are clustered by the beach. So if you've got some wheels, it's worth the drive west to stop at the family-owned institution, Islas Canarias. In Miami, this is the pinnacle of croquetas. And if this is the pinnacle of croquetas in Miami, without a doubt, the world. There was a buzz about Cuban sandwiches in Miami, but another dish had almost as much fanfare. Croquetas. Little cylinders of happiness, served day or night, hot or cold, with sauce or without. I had no idea, but they were a staple. It's a fried ham mix of flour and onions and deliciousness. Oh, wow, they're tender, beautiful. Cheers. 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 You okay? I don't know if I am, honestly. <laughs> That's different. It happens. It happens sometimes. I'll tell you, it pairs well. It's my meat. Right? The pineapple flavor. The pineapple? Good. Yeah. You try Tampa's Cuban sandwich, and I wouldn't even call it a Cuban. They put salami in it, like John was saying. It's a no-brainer that the Miami Cuban sandwich is the true Cuban sandwich. You want to follow with that? Pro tip? 
You do a little croqueta, put it oh, yeah. in the sandwich. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just like that, we call that croqueta preparada. Yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's its own sandwich in itself. Oh, yeah. I don't know how what, how you're getting those ideas. I don't know. I mean. What you're, what you're it, smoking on there? Oh, keep it in the morning. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Islas Canarias had a ventanita of their own where I could show off my newfound ordering skills. No stuttering. Tres cabecitas y uh, ventiros croquetas. <laughs> Miami has its old guard of sandwiches, but there's a new class of culinarians creeping up with some big ideas. One of the homes to such ideas was Little Havana's Doce, where they take the Cuban to the next level by dropping the croquetas smack in the middle of the sandwich. Your sandwich is a little bit different than the ones that I've seen along my journey so far. It is. We actually used the original recipe that was started in Tampa, and that has salami instead of the roasted pork. My wife's Cuban, and everybody that's really Cuban knows that there's really no Cuban sandwich in Cuba. What does she think of the sandwich? She loves it. it passes yeah. the test? Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. You have a little bit of a twist to your sandwich, and it yeah. makes you almost cocky about your sandwich. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like charcuterie in a bun, because we put the chorizo croquette on there, and it has the bacon, it has the smoked pork. Ooh. So it's like layers of flavor in there. We only make 25 a day, and when we're out, we're out. Look how beautiful it is. It's tall. It's all in the details, man. It's, thick. it's all in the details. Real ingredients, you know, real simple. And fuck, tell me about it. <laughs> Wow, that's fucking fantastic. Every single time I eat here, oh, fuck that's fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Dead serious, man. Every single time I drop it at somebody's table, I say the same thing as you. You order right. You want a little bit of Cuban, my friends? <laughs> yeah. You said no. Nah. I'm very afraid of parrots. I got bit by one as a boy. One of the most bubbling, recognizable neighborhoods in town is Wynwood, marked by its rich murals and artistic flair. Equally artistic are the Cubanos being served over at Kush. So we do everything in house. We grind our own beef, we make our own sauces, we mm. slow roast our pork for our specialty, the Kush Cubano. Ooh, the Cuban. Kush Cubano. Yes. It's the hallmark of Miami. Anywhere you go, you're gonna find a Cubano. Maybe a variation of it, but nonetheless, a beautiful, delicious, like, pressed Cubano sandwich. That's good, Mike. <laughs> That's very good. As Miami matures, the little homes and shops blossom into condos and skyscrapers. One spot that's resisted the change is Enriqueta's, a little window that's refused to sell their prime real estate even as behemoth buildings are built around it. And you can see why. Their classic sandwiches are timeless. My grandfather bought the business around like 20 something years ago. Yeah. And you know, uh, I was, I've been here since I was like five years old and I've been working here ever since. So the two layers of meat, they right. make it different. It's not like ham and cheese, no, you have like different, obviously the difference of the pork and then the, and the ham. What is the difference between pork and ham? Am I stupid for not knowing that? It's the part of the, of the pig. So. One tastes like this, one tastes like that, and when they're together, it's magical. Exactly. It's fantastic. What do you see, what do you see? Do you like what you see? It looks crazy, doesn't it? With the ham and the pork. What? You want a you want a bite of it? How about half of it? What about this half? You want that half? I don't. I don't. I. I, I can't facilitate that transaction. I feel like it would be way easier if you just took the, the part of the sandwich that you want. Doesn't that look good? I don't want the money, dude. Mango, tequila, soda, it's fantastic. You wanna take a pop of it? Sure. Yeah, what a guy. Is it strong or? No, it's, it's, it's light. It's like any time of the day. Damn, I can finish 10 of these. Let's go. It's like that. Bro, I'm gonna get lit tonight. <laughs> responsibly. Responsibly. Drink responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs> Do they have other flavors? Yes, bro, they got lime, they got paloma, they got all kinds of other flavors. Oh, the lime one must be fire then. Bro, you're like a born pitch man. Do they have other flavors? You're asking all the right questions. <laughs> no spot is a testament to the new wave of Miami as much as Coral Gable's Tinta y Cafe. Super specific, masterful decor, no cell phone rules to encourage, you know, actual conversation, and the sandwiches unbelievable sandwiches. I just watched you watch someone make a sandwich. You were locked in, arms folded, just making sure that every single part of it was correct. We gotta take pride in it because that goes through our food. If you don't believe in it, then why would you serve it? Tinta also has a different take on croquetas. They come short, fat, and steaming hot. Thank you so much. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, so soft, so hot, oh man. <laughs> 
Oh my god. So a Cuban sandwich, how's that supposed to go? At least for us, it's pan seared pork that was cooked for 12 hours. So I feel like pan searing the pork makes all the difference in the world. Just the layers of it just yeah. look so beautiful. It's just... That's really important, layers. So every layer has to be distinct, almost like a color palette, like a rainbow. Yeah. But of just different different types of, of pork. Look at that, it's like... Uh, it's just cute. Yeah, really cute. It's just like the perfect little handheld size. It's like nice and thin. It's just the perfect meal, like a, a little lunch. That's all the spots we hit in Miami, but that doesn't mean those are the only ones to visit. Drop us a line, let us know where to go, and you might see us next time on Neighborhood Eats. I feel like sporty. Uh, I'm like Fieri. Tony this is like what Fieri would wear. You're no Fieri. You don't think Fieri would wear this? Not even close. Or Richmond? <laughs> man vs. Food? Man.